A Berceuse by Fauré. all these weeks of never ever playing music. It's lovely just to have a chance to come together and do something simple, elegant, tuneful. Such a pleasure to make music. I think that's what all of us musicians want at the moment, is just to be playing. It's who we are. I mean, my reaction to this lockdown, I'm a bit shocked by it because I practiced every day for a month too much. I mean, I, would, I looked after, after a while, I thought, you know, this is desperate. I'm desperate, but I'm just saying who I am. And, and I didn't know who I was with the thought, I'm never going to play again, or when am I going to play again? It's difficult. And I've, and I've eased off now a little bit, you know, but uh, got it down, down to a proper balance. That's hard, isn't it? The balance. I've enjoyed so much in the lockdown period, the silence here in Highgate, yes. the stillness, yes. the loudest thing being the song of the birds. Yes. The traffic, almost negligible, you know, the wind sometimes, which is nice, yes. seeing the garden you know, grow and get colour in it. But it's been an extraordinary experience. Now, you, but you live out in the country, then. not you? Yes. I live in, in, in Hertfordshire, about, uh, about an, hour, an hour north of here. And uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm so lucky because we, we're not near many people. Um, I, I've got... Um, Skylark singing in the field behind us. Uh, people say there are more birds. There aren't more birds. There really aren't. They didn't suddenly say the other side of the Sahara, hey chaps, let's go north. It's pretty good there at the moment. It's just that we're noticing them more. We have been. 
and that's wonderful and and maybe they are freer in some ways I and mean, in nature is a little bit wilder because of not being interrupted but it, it is gives great succor and uh, um, to us all i think and it's been so important hasn't it to feel from our patrons and the people who support us all over the country how much they miss what we do the, that the music we bring to people is something they look forward to they value they cherish it's a sort of food isn't it yes i think well, you know, a lot, a lot of us are doing a lot online and that's wonderful, keeping in touch with what we do with our audience. And yet, for me, the audience is part of the music that we play. Uh, otherwise, as I sometimes say to people, without you, this is a rehearsal. And you are part of what we do. It's a, it's a, it's a combined thing, it's a circular thing. I miss that, so I would hate to think that that is not going to come back. We have to find a way, we will find a way, but it, it, nothing makes up for that, really, in my view. I entirely agree. We're all trying to keep going with our hearts and eyes fixed yes. on the future, aren't we, that we'll get it back. I, I, I just can I say, can I tell you a little story about the Halley? Uh, I go every week, do the shopping, once a week at Waitrose, and I'm shopping for an elderly gentleman in the village who is not very well, and, uh, uh, he said to me when I brought him his goods, he said, Paul, it's just so lovely. I just like you to know that I really enjoyed your performance of Gerontius at Leeds Town Hall last March. So I said, oh, good. Well, I didn't know you were there. And then he said, because I haven't been in the Leeds Town Hall with Halley since 1957 when Hindemith was conducting. Good. He, there, he there went into his house and bought out two scores of Hindemith with Hindemith's name written on because he'd got the signature. I was just, I was over, I was bowled over. And then the next week I went to Waitrose and the man who was serving me heard that I was a musician and said, oh, you're a musician? I said, yes, I am. He said, what do you play? Violin, who with? The Halle. He said, uh, I said, do you play? He said, I'm a trumpeter. And I used to play principal trumpet in the Young Musician Symphony Orchestra and your principal trumpet, Gareth Small, was down the line. <laughs> and I just thought, gosh, what you get from work going to Waitrose, they both, both things about the Halley came. And I just sort of felt so touched that in Harpertshire, I'm being reminded of the Halley just before I go into Waitrose. It's not a very important thing, but it, somehow it meant a lot to me. Oh, and it would to me too. Yes. I find people write letters to me or stop me in the street, or I meet them in a, another concert hall or theatre or something like that, and they, they talk to me about their memories of the Halley. I had a letter the other day from a man who's been listening for 60 years, you know, is missing it so much. Mm. But you've been with us, haven't you, for years now, Paul, yes. I'm happy to say. Do you know how many years it is? No, but around 17. Right. Um, I, I need to count it up. And I, you know, I only just remember what my age is because I don't want to count it up very much, but. Well, you've been, you've been a wonderful leader for us all. And um, we're very, very grateful that you've given so much time. We really are. And you've played so many different sorts of music, haven't you? It's a huge repertoire. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that, that, the, that the idea of the orchestra is one that you've seen grow and that you like what, the way the orchestra is going? Do you think we've got to find another avenue, a direction to go in after this? I just, I'm afraid I find that hard to, uh, I'm not sure I've got the vision to see where we are going yet in relation to our orchestra. But it, I think... It feels like it's not going to be the same, quite. Uh, do you mean from a point of view of repertoire? Is that what you mean? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. I mean the whole artistic ethos of the orchestra. Perhaps we should be much more ready to be more flexible, yes. to do concerts in different places, yes. to do concerts with slightly smaller orchestra one week and, and only have the big orchestra in the, in the big halls, yes. to perhaps do um, parts of works you know, Halley himself used to do that when he was the, 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 the conductor, when he was still alive. Yes. He used to introduce works to the audience gradually yes. by doing a movement or two yes. movements or something. Well, I see no reason why we sh that shouldn't change and we, we, don't, we shouldn't stick to the old patterns that necessarily. Um, whatever, whatever is going to bring live music to people's lives, and that includes us musicians, because we, what, what I've learned from this is how we need what music says. It's a, it's a part of being a human being which words don't supply. Uh, if words would do what music does, we wouldn't need music. And uh, sometimes they come together, but I feel that very strongly. And that's what's missing. 
And I, you know, what we can put records on, it's not the same. No, it's not, because the presence of the public means this is a one and only time. Yes. And anything might be going to happen. And I feel strongly that the public sometimes don't realise, or I want them to realise, that we notice them. I mean, you can do the same concert three nights running, and it's different every night. The audience is different. Something is different in the atmosphere, and I don't know what that is. Yeah. But it's something that is tangible. And it changes too, doesn't it, when we take the same music to yes. another city. Yes. We go to Nottingham, for instance, yes. or Gateshead, yes. and we play the same music. And the atmosphere of the hall and the atmosphere of the audience means that we're doing it as if for the first time. Yes. You know, the atmosphere is, is different. It's it different. can be that two nights running, you play the second night far better than you played the first. But the first was the one that really told something in the air. And that is inexplicable. Yes. And it's so valuable, that. It's so, something to be cherished, isn't yes. it? Yes. It's real, that, for us, isn't it? Yes. Now, one of the other things that's really interesting for our supporters and patrons would be for you to say a little bit about this famous Stradivarius violin. What's the story behind that? Well, the, uh, as far as I understand it, the, 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 the Strad, which I, I played until 2012 for nine years, and I was so privileged to play this instrument, it was bequeathed to the city of Lincoln to be played by the leader of the Halle. And I think it was a lady who was in the Lincoln, the second violins in the Lincoln Orchestra. I, I hope I've got this right. Uh, and she, maybe in lieu of death duties or something, it went like that. But anyway, it's been left for the leader to play. And it's a very special violin. It's one of the earlier ones. And it is, uh, it takes some getting used to. It's not easy to play. But uh, once you get used to it, it, it can give you all manner of richness. So how can one violin be easy to play and another be harder to play? Well, the experience with this violin is that with my colleagues when I played chair music was they couldn't hear my sound so well with the Strad, although the Strad sound is far bigger than the violin sound I have now. But it begins to sound out in the audience is where it really begins to sound. It's a, it's a curious thing, it seems to go in that way. So close to, even recording it, the microphone must be not be too close, but must be further away. I think this is a quality of many strads. That's a, something very special, very magical. So the person who plays that knows that they're going to get to the back of the hall because they've got a solo. And that is, that's fantastic. I mean, my violin really does carry too, but in a different way. Right. So this is like learning about how a car functions on the motorway, isn't yes. it? Knowing how how much acceleration you've got, yes. as it were, and where it's comfortable and where it's yes. being pressed too much. Yes. Well, that's fascinating. And you mustn't over-manage it. You must let it speak. And that's why some people do not find it easy to play a strad, because it doesn't necessarily do everything you want. You've got to say, I'll go with you, Mr. Strad, and then you will, suppl you will supply me with what I want. But if I over-control you, you might just say no. So you can crush the sound on, a str on m many strands if you're not careful. But this idea of playing on an instrument to get a specific musical result is fascinating for me because as a conductor, I think of the orchestra as my instrument. And if I play on it in the right way, I get the sounds and the result that I'm hoping to hear. And if I don't, for whatever reason, maybe an acoustic that I don't enjoy or, you know, the, it's just not going well. I don't get the best sound unless I play on the orchestra in the right way. Mm. You know, if I drive it too hard, the sound gets hard. Well, this is the relationship of you and the orchestra and, and me and the violin and any, anyone with their instrument is a very, very personal one. And uh, a, a very, very personal. And uh, that's why uh, people say sometimes that great violins and modern violins are just the same. They're, you know, modern ones can do just what old ones do. It, I don't. I'm not. I don't agree with that. I think there are some great modern violins, but the, some of the old violins have something which certainly they give the player something special. Many colours, new possibilities. Paul, over the years, you've you've played such a wide repertoire, and there was a long time in your life, wasn't there, when you led a chamber orchestra, yeah. and so you played um, a rather different repertoire from yeah. what you played with the Halle. Yeah. Where are your favourites still? I mean, is, has this changed as the years gone by? Um, my favourites? Well, it's different repertoire. 
and it's a di you know some of it overlaps and is the same way of playing and and actually uh, the well I was very taken with when we first did my first recording with the Halle was Elgar II oh. and I thought I said to you or I said to I can't remember what it was we did a few takes and I thought right now that you know now well, now we're getting down to down to it and they said no we've got it already and I thought but I didn't think it was really quite together and I went in and listened and it was sounded perfectly together now when you've got a very small orchestra that togetherness that absolutely fine togetherness that you can hear right or wrong you hear so that the edges are rounder that doesn't mean that we don't play together in the Halley but it's just a different animal it's so much bigger and the sound is much bigger so I wasn't used to that so having said that we in in chamber orchestra you play much more Mozart Haydn Mozart Beethoven you know uh, uh, that is your standard repertoire we do play those that and I wish we played more of it actually so do I. you know um, that's the basis of an orchestra's life is is Haydn for me, Haydn, Mozart, Schubert, Beethoven, you know. We have to think a little bit in Manchester that if we programme that too much, it seems in conflict with the Manchester Camerata. I yes. Um, and uh, we, we're very good colleagues and, you know, they're a marvellous orchestra. But we have to just to, to tailor that sort of thing to the, the overall view of, of that sort of music in, yes. in the city. But I think it's wonderful when we have done Haydn. I think the orchestra does Haydn really, yes. really marvellously. Yes. We did it once, I remember we all stood up. All I was doing orders. that, yes, I remember it. Remember. Yeah, which, what was it? Do you remember the symphony? No. Was it 87? I can't remember what it was. No, La Chasse, was it? No, it wasn't. We've done La Chasse, but I, didn't. Yeah. I think it was one in C major. And everybody wanted to stand up, that's what yes. I liked. Yes. The horns and the, and the, the oboes, you know, they were yes. really happy yes. about it and felt free. Well, I think, I think the, the old repertoire informs how you play later repertoire and vice versa. And, uh, you know, we just did a, we did a, a, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good Bach B minor mass. They gave me great pleasure. I thought that went extremely well. And, and I was so pleased how we did that because it's not our normal repertoire. Yeah. So that's, um, that's very rewarding. We did a, things that stand out in my memory are, I have to say, Damnation of Faust was a biggie for me. We did it in Edinburgh and then we came back a year later or six months yeah. later and it was just, oh, that was a really special evening. Well, that was one of the pieces, you know, that Halle himself introduced to the audience in Manchester because he was a great friend of Berlioz. He knew Berlioz well and he treasured his friendship with him more than any other of these extraordinary relationships he had yes. in Paris in the middle of the century. You know, he knew Liszt and Chopin, Stephen Heller, and he was he was very close to a lot of people. But the Berlioz one, I think they had a very special relationship. So to, for him to bring that music to Manchester uh, and introduce it gradually, not straight away, but one part one year and another part the next year, is, is clever. It's true to get the, the audience ready for it. There's another thing about the difference between chamber mm -hmm. orchestra playing and symphony orchestra is playing is as a violinist you get round your instrument much more of it. I mean, the parts are much more complex on, in symphony orchestra. The writing is much more complex, with, of course, exceptions, you know, because, because the, uh, the romantic way of playing and the, the modern stuff, and, the, and uh, you know, it, it is it, it, regularly, there are so many notes to learn and to play yes. in symphony orchestra. Uh, if you're a violinist and, and other instruments, I can't speak for other instruments. And colours and effects yes. too. Yes. 20th century music is full of that. Well, this is all very positive, and I think what we should do now is, is play something else. Good. We've got, we've got another little piece, haven't we? We're going to play the med meditation from Massenet's famous opera, Thais. And this is a lovely work. It's often done separately, isn't it? In fact, I think you've done it with that. Yes, quite often, yes. Yeah, it's a very popular piece. And it works well with the piano, I think. It, it makes a, a lovely contrast. But Paul, thank you so much for thank your you. time. And thank you. Here we go.